Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Committed Critics, a pop culture podcast where we're not only committed to our opinions, but also each other. Aww. Aww. I'm Kevin Lau. I'm Ryan Davis. And I'm Zachary Wright. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Doing great. How about you? Oh, uh, well, we just had a nice blooper reel before this happened, so it was... <laughs> we did. It was a good time. <laughs> it all started because I said, Avatar sucks! <laughs> 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 so we're coming back for, to from uh, why we started this podcast. It was because Zach and I challenged each other to... I challenged him to watch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, his first anime. Yay! And he challenged me to watch Avatar The Last Airbender, uh, a show I've never seen before. My favorite ch- uh, childhood show. Everyone's favorite childhood show. Come on, you're not unique. I mean, I was back in the day. Yeah, mm-hmm. but until I got to a liberal arts college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until you found out, hey, your entire floor watched Avatar. <laughs> yeah. Literally the year before you got there. They still watch it to this day. Yep. Some people have the entire thing on Blu-ray. And somehow I missed it. I don't know how. Um, I didn't have cable when it came out, and I just never got around to watching it. But now I have. And but before I go into my spoiler free thoughts, Zach, what's your spoiler free thought of Full Metal, Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Um, it was it was really good. I enjoyed my time with it. Um, there are some like lulls. I know I can't quite remember the like because they are separated into parts, not seasons. So for the sake of the argument, I'm just gonna call them like season one, season two. So mm-hmm. so like season one and season two, like I'm really hazy on because I watched it a while ago and I binge watched like three and four and then. The end, like the ha- latter half of, of season five, kind of dragged a little bit for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, the earlier stuff, it was kind of. I'm glad I had Ryan there with me to explain. I was able to hold my own during like parts or seasons three and four. But toward the end, I man, I wish Ryan was there watching with me because I got so confused. I'm like, I think that's what's happening, but I'm not quite sure. Mm, so I apologize. <laughs> No, it wasn't your fault. We were on break. Well, we had Christmas, man. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been there, Ryan. What kind of friend are you? Are you really that committed? No. No, I left him. Let's be cl- let's be clear here. I left uh-huh. him. So Zach's the one that's not committed. I mean, we finished at the same time, so. We did, yeah. We're, we, t- we're... <laughs> t- we, t- we tied. Look at us. We tied. Yay, it all worked out. But yeah, ov- overall, my sp- like spoiler-free thoughts, like, good show. I love the t- I love Ed and Al as characters. Their brother duo is really, it was a nice change of pace from what I'm used to watching. Very strong characters. Every character is very fleshed out um, from a lot of side characters who show up later from the me having to remember, like, I can remember all the MCU, but God, I see the same blonde looking guy in this anime. I'm like, is that the same guy from early? No. Okay. That's not the one that's paralyzed. Okay. Got it. <laughs> But yeah, so the, all the characters are very fleshed out, which is really nice, and I love a good, I love a good characters. Um, yeah, the story overall, it was solid. Out of ten, what would you rate it? Uh, I did mine out of five. I gave it a, a like a what? I, what did I say, Ryan? A four? Yeah, you gave it a four out of five. Yeah, I gave it a four out of five. So eight out of ten. Eight out of ten, maybe. If we're doing out of ten, probably seven out of ten. But what? That's not how math works. Yeah, I know, but like you have more wiggle room with ten. You can do this. You can say three and a half. I don't want to be a dick. Jeez. But <laughs> well, well, then. All right. Is that Kevin, but, uh, Kevin, just go off. Go off right now. <laughs> that's not how math works. It's not how math works. Not how math works. But, <laughs> but so <laughs> how this is your, being your first anime. What are your thoughts on anime now? Like what were your expectations going in and how do you feel about the medium leaving the show? Um, the medium is just, it's just a long cart, like long form cartoon, really just Mm -hmm. through a different cultural lens. Um, I think my biggest, not problem with it, it just, there's a lot of callbacks, like even more than I'm used to with like, like MCU films, for example, like you gotta have a lot of brain power to store everything you need to know about the MCU. I guess all that space in my head has been used and I couldn't remember for the life of me, like, oh, I think that's Maria Ross. Yeah, that's Maria Ross. Okay, cool. So it's just stuff like that. Like, it's very, like, it's all connected, which is really cool and a really cool, like, vibe to, like, watch and see unfold in front of your eyes. But it just takes a lot of, like, um, not willpower, but, like, brain space. Yeah, I do. I will say that other shows, other animes tend to do flashbacks a lot better than how Fulman Alka's brother does. Um, they, they don't really do it as much in the, in Brotherhood, I think, is more like just trying to be as efficient as possible with its storytelling 
and just boom, 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 boom. Kevin talking about flashbacks? <laughs> <laughs> flashbacks? Naruto? What? <laughs> but it's nice to hear that you, you've you been swayed into the anime realm. Don't, let's, not get, let's not get crazy here. So anyways, you want to watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Oh, God, don't put... No, uh, it's no. A great show. <laughs> don't give it... Don't make him start with that. <laughs> I'll watch My Hero, maybe. I'll watch My Hero, maybe. Uh, yeah, because I have superheroes. That may actually be the best one for you to watch next, uh, depending on your taste. But I think we'll touch on that a little bit later. For now, I will say, in my sp- quick spoiler-free thoughts on Avatar, The Last Airbender, the the first Nickelodeon show to really get as serious and serialized as it is, um, it's pretty good. I really like it. It's a solid show. I do. I really love the world building in the show. I, it's such a really rich history, and like the geography is really like well well thought out as well. Um, I really love Zuko, who is starts off as the antagonist and kind of. I've almost said spoilers. Uh, so he he goes through change. He goes through the most change throughout the whole show. Um, actually, whereas like you know, Aang is a really cool main character. He doesn't go through as much change, but that's part of the deal. Like he changes the world. Um, I do feel like some of the cast is kind of underwritten, but it's a kid's show. So, you know, what are you going to do? Right. Right. Um, it does kind of lag a bit here and there. Like a lot of season one was like a lot of stop and go. The latter half of season two was kind of okay. And the same same thing with the early half of season three, but overall it really comes together very well. It has a very satisfying conclusion. And honestly, can't wait to watch Legend of Korra. It's going to be even better, right? Huh, 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 huh. 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 I will say in in a, terms of both your uh, opinions, I will say rewatching both Full Metal and Avatar, both the se- part one for Full Metal and season one of Avatar are the hardest for me to rewatch. Uh, they like they're the slowest for me. One, well, and- yeah, it's the same problem with both shows. Or the season one is a lot of stop and go. Uh, with Full Metal, because Brotherhood, the problem is that, um. It, it is redoing what's already been animated with the original show from 2003. So, in, but so it's more like, oh, let's just do like a faster version of it. So it doesn't quite work as well as it should. Um, I, whereas it's very staccato. Yeah, it, it's it's um the original show has the opposite problem where it goes too long and has a lot of filler in it. So there's like it needed to strike a nice healthy medium, but it also like, you know, the first show was really big when it came out. So now with this remake, they, they wanted to make sure they get to the new material that uh, fans of the older show haven't seen before. So that was I, I, that's where I kind of give it a pass. Where it's like, okay, you had to like, you had to like go through it really quickly. It I think there's even better. an argument to be made for Full Metal. There are some beats that could have it could have been a little bit more shorter and more concise. Right. But I under, understanding from where it came from, like I'm sure, like this is leagues better than the original oh um, definitely i mean if you want anime hitler then go ahead watch the original you want to watch hand anime hitler and then somehow they go through different dimensions and you don't worry about it <laughs> their mom comes back for some reason <laughs> oh god yeah no it, it yeah i i remember i rewatched avatar recently i think like two summers ago and like yeah season one it's hard to get through and season parts seasons one and two of full metal are a little bit more not like harder to get through i just i think stuff could have been cut down a little bit to make it a little more um or other stuff could have been focused on more to really get uh, ideas across but we'll get into that in the late at the back half of this yeah for sure start but right now i'm going to pass it off to ryan who has uh composed a few questions for us uh about each show and our thoughts on it and we will see which show is better. Is it Avatar? Is it Fullman Aquaman's Brotherhood? Is it Legend of Korra? Spoilers. It's apples and oranges. Uh, well, first of all, I was gonna have, most of my questions are character based, so I'm gonna start off with a different question that's a little bit less character based. But so Avatar is an American cartoon that has Asian culture cultural themes, while Fullman Alchemist is a uh, Japanese anime but it's more based around like european uh culture so do you think that using kind of these these cultures like flip-flop in their own like you know takes in the world and do you think those settings work for the, what they're trying to come across as um i know i probably should answer for the full metal part of this but just real quick i want to touch on 
Avatar was probably my first step into the quote anime mm-hmm. realm and different Asian cultures besides like obviously like heavily influenced things like Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. So right. I think it's a good like dipping your toe into the kiddie pool and before you just dive into it. But that's just my two cents. What What do you think, Kevin? So uh, it is uh, Avatar is definitely like a love letter to anime and Asian culture. Uh, I do some of it was a little kind of iffy uh, in terms of like you know race representation, but it's not like a, it wasn't like a big deal. Like I wasn't offended or anything. It was just like ah, oh, this is clearly made by Americans. Uh, but it, it, I do think it uses. I don't know. The, the dragons were kind of weird in Avatar. They they kind of just came out of nowhere, and the spirit world wasn't used Listen, very. Kevin, much. nothing, nothing will be as bad as the race problems in the movie (laughs) uh yeah yeah i seen the movie it's bad (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah you saw the movie before you saw the show i did yeah but like a long time ago uh so i haven't like i don't remember anything about it except for how terrible it was fair (laughs) but it's yeah but like you know i say you know the use of asian culture in avatar was pretty pretty well done you know, it could be it could have been a lot worse, especially given the time period. This was during the George Bush era of oh yeah, uh, in, in, of politics. So th- there's like um, Oof. yeah, there's a, there's a lot of so there's a whole like thesis and everything about uh, how the politics of that time influenced uh, media and how that change in two thousand eight changed media as well. There's a whole thing about that. Um, but I you know, Avatar is good. <laughs> um, as for like Full Metal, um. The more European based, I guess, um, ideas that are in there. I guess it was just maybe like hard for me to track because like I know like a mistress is kind of supposed to represent like Germany, like with the mm-hmm. like the leader being like the Fuhrer. It's mm-hmm. so, like that was kind of like shock at first. But like, I mean, I do like what they were doing, showing like how like the whole like world itself is this like characterization of different lands. Like, like, um, do you guys get what I'm saying though? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like they had the Xing, Xing, which was basically chi- was it po- supposed to be China? I'm assuming, or just like yeah, it's it, essentially China. Okay, I was making sure it is China, not a different Asian culture. But yeah, mm-hmm. I get what you mean. Like it's a, it's a very vibrant world, especially like a master technically has different parts to it. So like the Shvalans, it has uh the other cultures to which they don't really give them names, but you know i'm pretty sure drachma to the north is supposed to be russia it's not, it doesn't make sense it's not an actual map of the world but what yeah, is but interesting it's more of a close oh, sorry i was gonna say it's more of a close like amalgamation of the world whereas avatar is more like simple like here are colors to represent these four nations mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and uh, so the thing with the uh avatar adapting asian culture is that it doesn't carry over the th- the the theme of community um that asian culture does have so like you know the whole thing with anime cliche of like i will win with the power of friendship that's you know but that's like the basis of you know their commu- of their um country's morals like you know japan is all about community and helping the other man it is about it is not about imid- individualism and being the hero it is about helping your friends and your fellow neighbor to achieve both your goals so that doesn't quite trans uh translate as well with avatar um because it is it is Amer- it is asian culture with view through the american lens but with full Alka's brotherhood viewing your Euro- europe through a uh, japanese lens i feel like that sense of culture is there yeah because they're very nationalistic do you how do you think about that zach um i think in turn it works in through the lens of ed and al they're always willing to help other people but like people who have ulterior motives and like with the, their own nations, for example, like like Mustang, for example, isn't really he's only there to pursue his own goals and become um, not sorry, not going to spoil that. Um, no, we're, we're, we're spoilers now. You're good. Oh, we are. OK. Like he wants to become the Fuhrer. So like that's his main goal. And like I, I think he only really like played ball with Scar, for example, because it was a means to an end. Mm-hmm. But that's just I guess how I I saw it. Right. And uh, yeah, no, I definitely agree. But I think with like Mustang, he learns to like, you know, he learns to empathize more with uh, Riza Hawkeye and yeah, and like, you know, really like really understand the, his fellow man. So like, you know, with, you know, with the, uh, ah, I for totally for blanking his name in the beginning the guy we were talking about that got killed in season one. Oh, uh, um, uh, Hughes. Hughes. Yes. Yeah. So like he used to look down on Hughes, but then he realized what 
you know how much of influence Hughes had with his community, right? And I, and then he learns from that, so he learns not to be so individualistic and learn to be more of a stronger member of his community. That's true. Yeah, I can see that for sure. I think it's I think those ideas of community are definitely stronger in Full Metal, mm-hmm. but I think in the world of Avatar, it's simplified more to adhere to the protagonist. So like Ang, Sokka, Katara are always the ones who are helping and being like co- contributing to a community. Right. So, but. I think we are hitting 15 minutes, Kevin. We are hitting 15 minutes. And on that note, we are going to have a quick break. Looking for a spot to advertise your business, product, or service? You can have a personalized ad right here on Committed Critics. Email us at committedcritics at gmail.com for more info. And we are back from break. I hope you got a nice soda because uh, we are going to talk a little bit more on uh, Avatar Last Airbender and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Ryan has a few more questions for us. So let's uh, let's tune in to Ryan and his thoughts. <clears throat> well, if you want to know, uh, one of my questions here is uh, comparing the show's kind of character dynamics. So you have uh, the gang, which is, you know, Aang, uh, Katara, Sokka, Toph. Uh, and Zuko. I mean, you can include Suki in there if you want to, but uh, and then we have the eh. Elric Brothers and Company. Uh, to this extent, I make it the Elric Brothers, Winry, uh, Mustang, Armstrong, and Hawkeye. And I'm gonna kind of leave it to there because technically, in Company, it could be like a lot of people. But um, basically, like, how do you kind of, like which of these groups kind of have like more development and then also more chemistry? uh kind of like wh- what do you see between the two of them all right kevin you go first yeah so with this one i think the elwick brothers has more chemistry uh with their group than ang and his friends do only because i feel like with ang and his friends like there's not a lot of characterization in in their development and what i mean, mean that is like Sokka is like the most developed character he is the most three-dimensional he has a lot of conflicting emotions and like you know he's good at it's like oh i'm good at making maps but i'm bad at executing plans mm-hmm. um he has that nice you know conflict of idea of uh being able to you know of abilities as well so but like in terms of like how the team uh, works together as a whole like they all have those same goal they're like they're all right, all right cool we're gonna help Aang get good and fight the emperor and that's and they don't really stray outside of that they don't have their own personal goals they don't have their own uh you know, it real their own backstories that motivate their goal. I mean, they do, but it's like it's it, it feels pretty flat compared to um, within Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, where the Elric brothers and his and their friends they 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 go they go do their thing together. They separate, they come back, separate, come back, and there's always like you can see how the relationships mature with each other and slowly like you know they progress as more mature people and growing in during this time of war. How about you, Zach? What are your thoughts on that? So I think the way I'm seeing this is more of like, I think of like Avatar as like a basic like math equation, like two plus two equals four. Mm-hmm. Whereas Full Metal is like throwing in X's and letters into math. Like it's a little more algebraic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like in my head, uh, the core group of Aang, Sokka, Toph, and um, Katara, and even Zuko when he comes in later though that feels more like a dynamic like a group dynamic i care about each of those characters because they work together like very well in my head um but that being said i think ed and al work are a better duo than any of the other characters in avatar Mm -hmm. but once ed and al split up and have their own groups i i start to lose interest because i'm i'm where i'm more invested in the brothers relationship yeah they're split Mm -hmm. up i want to know how they get back together but the only other relationship that comes close is ed and ling um the prince from shing so i mean yeah i think yeah that portion of the show you're talking about when they separated that's like the weird dry portion of the show and it spends a lot of time for that on that for some reason yeah it takes a lot for ed and al to get back i think they don't don't get back to it like after ed gets hurt like that was interesting ed gets hurt like oh crap like the main guy is like kind of like how ang gets shot by lightning and he like he basically asleep until you see him again 
Whereas mm-hmm. Ed kind of goes off on and does his and basically grows ten inches <laughs> during a time jump. I mean, they both have a they both have a time skip. So I don't know. For me, it's Ang was asleep the entire time. Like nothing. Like Ang's story stopped right as he got shot. Mm-hmm. Ed's story went on that we didn't see it. I would have loved to see Ed. I would love to see like a, like a short mini series of that little like two year gap where Ed's on his own. It's and not like, two years. It's like six. It's like a couple months. Yeah. Six sorry. Months. Sorry. Sorry. Six months. My bad um yeah so the little six months gap to see like how he changes and what he learns from that because when we get to him later he's fully developed i'm like man he's a badass now like cool mm-hmm. but i mean yeah well, I, I mean think, i will I feel s- like the same thing can be said about star wars that's between episodes episodes five and six i will say that um for anime that is a kind of a thing they do with time skips is that when they time skip usually the characters will come back like from training or from like some kind of experience so they'll you they'll have development and they still have their the same quirks they had before but they're a little bit more of a stronger uh seri- a little bit more serious character uh so for example naruto literally has a three-year time gap and he comes back he's much older he still has the same kind of naruto quirkiness but now he's just bodying enemies left and right, right. i just think that time jump is interesting would have been interesting to see yeah but i get what you mean i digress i mean yeah i mean like there's like you don't want to slow down the story for like a lot of training for see make sure the character is physically able to fight uh for the main story so there's that's why they they, they kind of anime kind of skips over it like even demon slayer more recent anime like there's a two-year time skip where like a main character is training i think it's like in the third or fourth episode yeah it's literally um, you no know, it's literally episode uh two, half of two and and all of three that's just a two-year time skip. Yeah, and then My Hero Academia has a one-year time skip of training, and that's in the third episode, I believe, as well. Yeah, yeah I but get it's just it. like I get it. Yeah, go ahead. but I mean, it was such a cool like moment. Like, man, like Ed just get got his butt kicked. Like he's with these two people he doesn't know. Like I would like to see that group get fleshed out and how that camaraderie. At least like in like an episode of that training. That's fair. Yeah, just a little bit, like a little like tease, like oh, I can like, and then I can let my let my imagination run with it. But Ryan, what's your next question? Well, since we're talking about training, that kind of leads into another question. Uh, the different power systems for the two different worlds. So for Avatar, there's bending. And then for uh, at Full Metal Alchemist, there's alchemy. So kind of like comparing the two systems and then what kind of works and what kind of doesn't. Uh, so both of them are, they use a hard magic system. So the each, so each magic system has rules uh, with alchemy and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. You have to like, you know, it has, it's all about equal exchange where like you cannot make something out of nothing. You have to sacrifice one thing to get another thing, which is the theme of the show. It's about it's about uh, commit. Um, what's the word? Committing sacrifices. Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. For lack of a better term. For lack of a better term, you have to commit sacrifices to gain to achieve your goal. Hashtag Thanos. <laughs> kind of like uh, do the ends justify the means. Like exactly what you're losing. Yeah. And then like, but, you know, but also the, the idea of like, what is the equal value of a human soul? And what, and what does this, and if you were to sacrifice a human soul, what does that give you in return? And what does that mean morally? Uh, with, uh, with Avatar, it's more about like being one with the elements that you are trying to bend and not everyone can do it. Whereas in Full Metal Alchemist, everyone can do alchemy. Um, they would have to at least like draw, not draw a circle. Uh, unless you were in Ed and Al's position where you saw the door of God and then you saw you would chain you got all the knowledge of the world and you were able to commit alchemy just by clapping your hands. Right. With Avatar it is about it is definitely still uses uses its uh inter- incorporates its themes into its uh magic system. Where especially with with Zuko, when he's learning how to like redirect lightning, he's learning that like, hey, like the firebenders don't know everything. You can learn you can learn so many things about fire bending through other types of bending, like water bending. So it's all so it helps with that theme of nationalism, where it's like they said that actually pays off in the end, where Zuko says like this. I uh, used to thought the Fire Nation was the be- greatest nation of all time, but actually we're just a bunch of jerks. And I think that just really helps tie it together. But I do think um, it is. I mean, it's, it's not, I don't think it's one is better than the other. It's like it's apple and oranges, like we said earlier. Like, you know, they both incorporate the theme into their um, magic system. But I do think the theme 
is stronger in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood only because it's like it's a more mature show. I think for me, I like I agree with you. It's apples and oranges. Like one's not better than the other. Um, I think Avatars is more simpler. It's four elements. One person is the chosen one who can do all four and even a fifth one later on. Cool. Alchemy, for example, it's a cool exchange, like you said. And I guess, I don't know if I just don't understand those rules or in my head, like some of those equ- equivalent exchanges aren't really equivalent to me. Like, yeah, I get it. Like, like what was a specific example? So the two I have is the one at the very beginning, one at the very end. So like when I know you guys were trying to explain to me earlier uh, a couple days ago, but like when they're trying to bring back their mom, like, yeah, two children trying to bring back an adult. That's not equal. Like, like it's not one human for another, but like Ed loses his leg and ed or al just dies Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like so i'm like okay i i understand like two children for one human or one adult yeah um but then at the end it's just kind of convenient that like al or ed gives up his alchemy his ability to have alchemy to bring back al it's just kind of like it's just those little things like they're just they're kind of plot holy like but they're not really plot holes it's just something that i don't agree with personally right but i do agree with you kevin the the idea of alchemy plays better into the themes of full metal. I just prefer the system of um, bending in avatar because it's a little bit more simpler and it's a little bit more easy for me to understand. <laughs> personally. Well, yeah. Well, cause like with, with a uh, full metal alchemist, it gets more metaphysical, like, you know, metaphysically having to sacrifice something to gain something in return. So in this, in this case, whether you're talking about like giving up the knowledge of alchemy in return for his brother's body and soul, uh, which, you know, yeah it's understanding like you know it's hard to really say like is this equivalent i don't know but you know you're it's a whole soul and body of a person yeah i mean zach and that question then uh the okay so ed bring ed is kind of a day of sex machina with trading his alchemy you can also say the uh trap card with uh the dwarf is (laughs) is a reverse card yes so basically which day of sex is worse that or uh, lion turtle energy bending. <laughs> in my head, I think they're both equally, uh, like they're both equally as much of a day as machina as the other one is. Well, okay, so that's not a day. Deus- a deus ex machina is when some godlike, godlike figure comes in and and is, and destroys the conflict, uh, and ends it uh, to where the you know it it uh, takes away dramatic conflict from the main characters. So, at uh, Ed giving rid of his al- alchemy. Uh, that's not a deus ex machina. That's just, you know, it's a plot hole to satisfy the character arcs and uh, the, the themes of the show. That's what I mean by the two of them. Because, like, you know, the Lion Turtle just comes in and mad- magically gives any energy bending. Um, and then Ed is magically able to trade his alchemy for Ed- for Al, which satisfies that. So which of these do you I think choose? the Lion Turtle technically would be more of a more deus ex machina. Yeah. But, however... You make the argument going back to Star Wars, like the Lion Turtle didn't necessarily give Aang the energy bending. He just kind of mm-hmm. maybe taught taught him that. But it's just it's so late in the show too, though. So it's like, that's why I was kind of like, eh, I don't know about this. Like this should have been established a little bit sooner. Yeah, it's something out of left field for sure in the show. I mean, Alkahestry is built up, but like I still don't even understand Alkahestry. I just assume it's the inverse of alchemy. But that's just me personally. Uh, this is a little bit just to create some chaos, but. Who do you think develop more as heroes or characters and learn from the more respective journeys, Ed and Al or Aang and Zuko? And then also, which of these two pairs do you think would win in a fight against each other? Zach, you want to start with that one? Yeah, I'll I'll start with that one. I think Aang doesn't go through a lot of change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to that extent, Ed goes through a lot of change. Mm-hmm. However, Al is kind of just Al goes through some change. Not as much just as Ed, not, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I mean like Al, it's it's kind of like Zuko goes through so much and Aang goes through so little. And Ed and Al both go through enough change where they're kind of equal they kind of bounce each other out a little bit in my head. Zuko goes through like a whole 360, like a whole redemption arc. Aang More 180. Yeah, sorry, yeah, 180. Yeah, 180, sorry. He becomes evil again. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> this isn't Game of Thrones. I mean, uh did you read the comic? <laughs> Oof. But yeah, but Aang kind of goes to a – he goes – he starts to understand the world, but he doesn't sacrifice his values, and that's what his change is in my head, quote-unquote, mm-hmm. whereas Ed and Al actually develop as characters, so I think they kind of balance each other out. Right. 
And I, I agree. So Ed and Al, I do think, go through a, a lot of development. Ed more so than Al. But Al is more the victim of the situation. So, like, he kind of he has, like, a pass of going through of, of his development. Um, but whereas with Aang and Zuko, so Aang, does, Aang purposely does not have an arc. Aang does not have to sacrifice his values because his values are already pure uh, through the American lens uh, of the of the show. And so the world, so what the Aang's go- job as, as in terms of story mechanics is to change the world. He is in constantly in conflict with the world that of, and and its history of like, so his history of the avatars were like, yes, you have to kill the fire Lord. You have to kill the fire Lord. And Aang is like, but I don't want to kill. Like killing is wrong. Like it's gotta be wrong. Right. So then in the end, he figures out a way to nullify the threat without killing him. And with Zuko, he, he goes through immense change. He, he goes, does a, like we said, he does a full 180. He is, goes from bad guy to good guy. Um, and I think like Zuko goes through the change that both Ed and Al went through, but with one character, but Aang doesn't do any change. Uh, so it, it's, it's equal in a strange way. And but it's you know, it once again apples and oranges. Like Aang is not supposed to have an arc, whereas Ed and Al are supposed to have an arc. And how's who would win in a fight? Um, Aang and Zuko. Come on, they can they can just bend elements. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to have they don't have to have ex- equivalent exchange. It's kind of a it's kind of a it's a little it's a hard battle because Aang still has the Avatar state. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you just, and. Ed doesn't have his alc anymore, so I mean it's kind of a mute point. Oh well, yeah. Well, if you're well, going well, through... We're talking about the peaks of both of them. So in their yeah. primes, okay, fine. Yes. Yeah, Ang and Ang and Zuko. Yeah, yeah. Come I on. mean, they can <laughs> they can bring, they can build stuff out of nothing. Ed and Al are gonna be like, "Where's your philosopher's stone?" Well, I mean, I mean, you could say that uh, bending the elements does require equivalent exchange because the element needs to exist in the first place around them. I mean, fire don't. <laughs> like you know, you cannot bend water without water, uh, but. You know, bloodbending. We, you're gonna have at least one element around you, so at least. And Aang has Avatar state, so he's gonna he's at an advantage no matter what. Yeah, that's fair. Throw a bottle of water in this in the stadium, and boom, every Aang and Al are dead. <laughs> that is the one advantage to like what Ryan said though. Zuko can create fire from wherever. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Oh, however, does does this show ever establish that you cannot create fire without oxygen? Nope. Nope. Because Zuko did it in literally sub zero temperatures. <laughs> But there's still oxygen there. They try to like bring that up in the movie like very poorly. They're like, oh, you need to have uh, fire to firebend. And everyone thought it was the stupidest shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's uh, not how, well, where does the fire come from? Ooh. Technically, it's supposed to come from the energy in the body or something. The heat in yeah. the body. I don't know. It's the energy. It's it, energy. Who yeah. cares? It's magic. Magic from kids shows, believe it or not. Yes, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is a kid show in Japan. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> Not me. Well, overall, I'm glad you guys both enjoyed these shows because, I mean, these are two of my favorite shows. So Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I really like Avatar. I give it a 7 out of 10. I'm not sure if it's something I would rewatch by myself. But if someone, but if a friend of mine is like, hey, let's watch Avatar, I'd be like, yeah, totally. Let's do yeah, it. I agree. Uh, how, yeah, how do you feel about Full Metal, Zach? Yeah. I, if Ryan or you guys wanted to watch Full Metal, like, I would be like, yeah, sure. Let's watch it. Like, I'm not Jones and rewatch it. Like. I'd probably wouldn't show my I would probably show my kids Avatar first and then when they got older show Full Metal. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, yeah, I wonder I imagine I wonder why. <laughs> it has nothing to do with censorship at all. Yeah, nothing to do with censorship. Yeah, cuz I'm like if you want to show them Full Metal as a kid, that second episode is going to mess them up good. Right, exactly. It's like, "Hey, here's your mom." <laughs> Any closing thoughts, Kevin? My closing thought is Hey Zach, so uh, which which anime you want to watch next? Um, My Hero Academia. That's my recommendation. We got a lot of other topics we gotta get through, but I do. I know Jordan wants to watch My Hero Academia too, so I'm sure we'll get to that at some point. You don't have to watch it right away. We can talk about it more in a different episode because I think maybe we should do like a personality test kind of thing, where it's like what anime will work best for you? Because maybe it's maybe like the goofy tone may not work best, but maybe a more serious tone would. I mean, I don't know. I I did like Full Metal. Like it was more my speed for sure, like style wise. But the goofier moments when it got like really cartoony with the expressions, what were your thoughts on that? Oh, those are fine. Like I'm used to yeah, like, that. You like the Avatar. <laughs> Avatar is very muted in that. I wish it did that more, honestly. I mean, Sokka killed it. He Sokka did killed it. God hashtag God plus Sokka. I was used to those emotes and stuff like that. But like, yeah, I wasn't like off put no. by it. There you go. Zach likes anime. He's a weeb now. No. 
one of us, one of us, one of us. This has been another episode of Committed Critics. Thank you for listening. You can follow us on Twitter at Committed Critics as C O M M I T T E D C R I T S. You can follow us on YouTube at Committed Critics, spelled the same there as it is everywhere else. You can support us on Patreon and link in the description. And special thanks to sound engineer Jordan Smearman for just being you, man. Just be awesome as like yourself. I don't know. I tried something there, but <laughs> she'll, she'll appreciate that. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next week. <laughs>